Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, 
we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, 
O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we complete the uh, Bread of Life discourse in the Gospel of John this Sunday, um, in verse 60 of the Gospel lesson I just read in John chapter 6, verse 60, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Now what they're referring to, the difficult teaching is when Jesus says, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have life forever. He who eats me will live forever. They're saying this teaching is difficult. It is hard, isn't it? It is difficult and they would have misunderstood. And so what happens is, I think you and I come across being a life or disciple of Jesus Christ. We, we have perhaps a notion of being a disciple as, as that which brings meaning, as that which brings a real, a meaningful life because we're serving others. And I think that is all true. But also we have to recognize that the sayings of Jesus are difficult. I mean, we have to agree with the disciples. These teachings are hard. These sayings are difficult. For example, if you just read the Sermon on the Mount in any of the Gospels where that appears, um, there are some just impossible demands on the life of a disciple. I often say, and people think I'm being flippant when I say it, but I'm not, I'm being, I'm being really serious. I say, look, if you want an easy religion to follow, I think you might want to shy away from Christianity because it is difficult. The sayings of Jesus are difficult. Just let's go over just a few of them that you already know. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Now, of course, he's speaking hyperbolically, but see how important that is. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Again, it's hyperbole. He doesn't really mean pluck it out, but he's saying, look at how important it is that you do not sin. Or something like, now listen to this one, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. These are, and they go on and on and on and on and on. Almost everything that Jesus said is hard. Difficult. Because it calls for you and me to live in a way that is countercultural to the world. Not only that, he calls us to live in a way that is countercultural. It, it's counter to who we are as human beings. This is why we refer to ourselves as sinners saved by grace. What does it mean to be a sinner? Does it mean you're an awful person? No, it has nothing to do with that. It means that there's been some kind of a separation between God and us that somehow, if God's will says go this way, we automatically want to go this way. That's what being a sinner means. So we begin with confession, telling God that we have not done it right. God forgives us and we go forth in newness of life ready to be disciples, not perfect ones, who witness to God's love in this time and place. So when his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. And the result was many left. Many stopped following. They had been following him, but many left because of the difficult sayings. Maybe we have been tempted to leave sometimes because of the difficult sayings of Jesus. You know, there was a Lutheran pastor whose name was uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. His name is really quite familiar in, in Lutheran circles, but um, uh, Bonhoeffer was um, living uh, here in the United States, uh, teaching at Union Theological Seminary, and he saw what was happening in Nazi Germany in 1938. He wound up going back. He could have lived a very easy, nice academic life here, but he felt that he needed, as a shepherd of the flock, he needed to go back and lead and guide because what was going on there was sinful and wrong. So he went back 
and wound up being thrown into prison because he was implicated in a plot to get rid of Hitler. So he wound up in prison and did a lot of writing from prison. And one of the compendiums of his writings is something called The Cost of Discipleship. And in the very first few paragraphs, he has a sentence where he says, and I'm going to, I'll use his actual language, it's gender specific for that time. He says, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Now that sounds pretty dire. At the same time, you and I know that it isn't truly in serving that we find joy. We can only serve ourselves so much. And we are never quite satisfied. But when it comes to helping someone else, we always feel good about that. You and I know it. You, you know you have had this experience before. Especially when you have kind of had to move out of your comfort zone to offer yourself in love to someone else. So they're saying it's difficult. These sayings are difficult. And so they leave. They stop following Jesus. So Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, so do you also wish to go away? He gives them an out. <laughs> and the problem is, if you go away, if from a Christian standpoint, if you go away from Jesus, if you stop following Jesus, the other road you're going to find really leads to dead ends. Who needs to go to a dead end? We all know what that feels like. I can remember, um, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I, I wound up getting a speeding ticket in the middle of a neighborhood back behind Sunrise Hospital. I got caught in the neighborhood. I couldn't get out. And every road I turned down seemed to have a sign that said, dead end. And I was getting more and more frustrated, not paying attention to the 15 mile an hour speed limit. And I was going 25. And a very kind motorcycle gentleman behind me was flashing lights. So I pulled over and um, we had a nice little discourse and I wound up getting a ticket. I didn't mean to break the law, but, but I did. So it was a dead end. Dead ends create hopelessness. The real truth of the gospel is to keep following Jesus, even though the sayings are difficult, even though we might be disagreeing with the person we have to love. We might disagree politically, we might, we might disagree in how we're using our money, whatever the, the disagreement happens to be. We are still called to love, and that is the hardest thing for human beings. And you and I know, all you have to do is watch somebody on TV spouting off something that you absolutely hate, and your blood boils. Pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Impossible sayings. Nevertheless, it doesn't relieve us from the responsibility of walking in that kind of truth and saying, God help me. I do want to follow and I want to love others. And I think that particular stance of listening to Jesus' word saying, do you want to go away also? Giving us an out, if you will, but saying along with Peter, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. All the others are kind of dead ends. Uh, you know, I became familiar with Robert Frost's poetry uh, uh, num many decades ago, and I continued a, a kind of a, a, a hobby study of Frost's uh, poems and uh, stories. I, I really appreciated uh, particularly some of them that, that were set to choral music, and so as I was singing in choirs, there was, a, um, there was a whole series of Frost poems set to music called Frostiana, and it was really wonderful because I got to memorize poems by Frost. And the one that has spoken to me decade after decade after decade is a, is a poem called The Road Not Taken. And I'll show the words as I describe this for you. And I want you to think in terms of following Jesus as a road, as a path. Frost writes, 
Two roads diverged in the yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I... I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, I don't think that Robert Frost wrote that poem in, in a religious sense, but I understand it that every time I follow Christ on that path, I think I'm taking the road less traveled. Every time I, I, I go out of my comfort zone a little bit to, to love someone who might be difficult to love. And let's face it, I can be very hard to love too. It's not like I'm sweet and nice. So I step out of my comfort zone, and every time I do that, I think I'm taking the road less traveled. And that has made all the difference. Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. We pray especially for those who are close to us and known to you, those who serve in the military, and those who we name out loud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. 
guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community in caring for the needs of our neighbors like Lutheran Social Services of Nevada. We are grateful for our companion churches in Guatemala, El Divino Salvador del Mundo and San Marcos, Pastor Jose Luis Marroquin, Pastora Karen Castillo, and the staff at Iglesia Luterana Agustina de Guatemala. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. <clears throat> Pastor Phil, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. <clears throat> May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.